Hello, and welcome to Game for Thought. Today we'll be covering the interesting topic of video game alternate history. However, before I dive in, I should take a moment to define exactly what alternate history is. Alternate history is a term for the possible what-ifs. For example, what if US President John F. Kennedy had never been assassinated? Or what if genocidal dictator A.F. Hitler had simply been hit by a bus before he came to power, and the actions pertaining to the Holocaust or World War II never occurred? Alternate history, to put it simply, dives into a fictional realm, an alternate timeline if you will, in which something in history has been changed enough to create a chain of events far different from what we know today. Quick note, all game history in this video is taken from multiple sources and may not be 100% correct. Please realize that these events took place over 20 years ago, and it is hard to get exact details right. Thank you. Today we'll be exploring the possible alternate history of a certain event in the gaming industry from the late 80s to 90s. The year is 1988, and Sony is more than just an established company in the computer parts manufacturing market, they are a juggernaut. Ken Kutagari, then a scrappy employee working for Sony, homebrewed some sound chips for his child Famicom because the sound quality was not satisfactory. Upon finishing these advanced sound chips, despite the scorn of his co-workers, Ken decided to show them to his boss. His boss decided to show Ken's work to Nintendo, and Nintendo was so impressed that they commissioned Sony to make the sound chips for their upcoming Super NES. Now as part of this contract, not only did Sony get their advanced sound chips in the upcoming Super Nintendo, they also got a deal to make a disc-based system that played both Sony CD games and Super Nintendo games. Sony quickly got to work on their Super Disc video game wonder machine. Fast forward to 1991, things are developing in a serious way for the Super Disc, now known as the Nintendo PlayStation. However, upon taking a deeper look into their contract, Nintendo finds that Sony has full rights to any compact disc-based games on the system. Nintendo, known for their tight third-party control with the NES, panics and sets a plan to motion that will impede on Sony's Super Disc, as this could take away enough revenue to cripple the gaming giant of the time. Nintendo decides to make a deal with Philips in response, as not only were they a rival of Sony at the time, but this way, they would get the right to make a CD drive Super Nintendo add-on system much like that of the Famicom disk system in Japan. Naturally, Sony was infuriated by this and threatened to sue, but Nintendo assured them that Philips would in no way impede the sales of their PlayStation. Surprisingly enough, after a few meetings, Philips, Nintendo, and Sony all decided to work together on add-on. This time, since Sega had made a 32-bit console add-on such as the 32X and the 32X CD, this new add-on will be made to boost the power of a Super Nintendo twofold, making it a 32-bit system. But sadly, after release of the Super FX chip that boosted console power, and the sheer lack of interest in CD-based console add-ons, such as the failure of the Sega CD or CDX, the project was cancelled late in development. Which really is a pity, because there were certain rumors of a new Zelda, Street Fighter, and Final Fantasy in the works for this console add-on. Obviously these plans got carried over into later consoles, but just imagine, a 32-bit Legend of Zelda with a fixed camera view much like that of Resident Evil, or Final Fantasy VII on a Nintendo console. So, angry and fed up with Nintendo's dealings, Sony decided to slip off and make their own console. And after a few years of reworking things and the failure of the Philips CDI, Sony released the PlayStation 1 in the holiday season of 1994. Of course, the Super Nintendo lived on, the PlayStation brand became a titan of the industry, and Philips quickly fell into obscurity in the realm of gaming. So this is where the history ends and the calculated speculation begins. Imagine a world where Nintendo as a company no longer exists. A world where we have HD Legend of Zelda and Super Smash Bros featuring Final Fantasy characters. And imagine a world where all of this is on a PlayStation console. This might seem crazy and dramatic, but if you think about what might have been if Sony had made the parasitic PlayStation, then this future could very well exist. Let's dive right in and see why. So, the year is 1991, and the Sega vs Nintendo console war is in its arms race phase. Sega is making insane add-ons, and Nintendo is trying as hard as they can to keep up. Imagine, under immense pressure and in fear of losing the youth as Sega perfects its edgy image, Nintendo sticks with Sony, deciding to take a leap of faith and make the Nintendo PlayStation. 
So, Nintendo, deciding to put all of their efforts into developing the PlayStation, they are able to launch in the holiday season of 1993. With increased memory and slightly boosted graphics, games like Donkey Kong Country and Star Fox are made a year earlier than the timeline without a PlayStation. And the Nintendo PlayStation outsells Sega by leaps and bounds. But as time goes on, the scales become rather unbalanced. Even though the Nintendo brand has skyrocketed in popularity, the money going to Big N is less than satisfactory. Nintendo, at first, wishes to sue, realizing that they have made a huge mistake. But since they are locked in a completely legal contract with Sony, they are unable. The year is 1994, and Nintendo is losing money fast. With an upgraded CD expansion of A Link to the Past in development, this could be the end for Nintendo. As the proverbial ship of the gaming juggernaut is beginning to fill with water, Nintendo begins development on a new console so they can discontinue the PlayStation and start anew. The Ultra 64, a 64-bit console system, begins development. At this point, Nintendo's working at bare bones, having to make the tough decision to lay off over a third of their staff, breaking their old policy for never making such layoffs. And, with A Link Between Worlds, the expansion to A Link to the Past to come out in a few months, Nintendo must have enough work done in order to justify the discontinuation of the PlayStation to Sony. Shigeru Miyamoto himself is called in to head the prototype creation. The Ultra 64, in order to remove any ties with the PlayStation, is renamed the Nintendo 64. But of course, as you know, things do not end well in this alternate timeline for Nintendo. The Nintendo 64 prototype is not finished in enough time, and A Link Between Worlds is a finishing blow to this once titan of the industry. Nintendo, instead of letting themselves fade out of existence, they decide to sell their properties to Sony. Sony then rehires many of Nintendo's pre-existing staff, as well as those fired because of the financial loss. Sony also inherits the Nintendo 64, planning to rework it as a disc system and release it in the holiday season of 1996. Of course, as many companies do, Sony keeps the Nintendo brand on their consoles for now. Consumers trust the brand far too much for them to change it. The Nintendo 64 is renamed to the N-Play 64 and launches in 1996 with Super Mario 64 and Metal Gear Solid, a 3D sequel to the popular Japanese game series made by Hideo Kojima for the MSX system. The NP64 is a massive hit, appealing to both young and mature audiences alike. The console is a giant, leagues further than its parallel timeline counterpart. In 1997, the three-disc adventure known as Final Fantasy VII is launched. In 1998, Ocarina of Time is launched at its full potential with a complete ice dungeon and an obtainable Triforce. In 1999, Super Smash Bros. is launched. It features Snake, Cloud, Tifa, and legions of other characters now on this system. The PN64 becomes a legend among gamers. Sony keeps producing amazing titles with the minds of old Nintendo and thrusts the N-Play brand into the modern age. The year is 2013. The N-Play U4 is to launch in a few months and games like Super Smash Bros, Super Mario Universe, and countless others. This is what could have been, and what could be now, only if Nintendo was pressured enough by Sega to stick with Sony and make the PlayStation. If Nintendo had thrown that NES caution to the wind, we could have had our N-Play empire. Well, at least we got Skyward Sword! Eh. Hello and welcome to the end card. It's me, Warp Pipe. I just thought I'd say thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was, it was a labor of love for the past two weeks, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And uh, I thought I'd do some shoutouts. Uh, Canapa, he helped edit the script because my writing isn't as polished as I'd like it to be. So he helped, you know, edit the script and he helped me with kind of fleshing it out. And this great music you're hearing right now is a cover of the Corneria theme by Epic Games Music. Subscribe to him. He's incredible. Off the charts amazing. And uh, I guess like, comment, and subscribe. You know, usually I wouldn't say this, but please just like share it, just show it to people, because I love this video that I just made, and I just want other people to enjoy it too. Anyhow, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.